Welcome to Global Science in a Nutshell. This is about the iris reflex. Here we are going to talk about how the iris changes or the muscles within the iris change so that the size of the pupil can be changed in order to control the amount of light entering the eye. The, whatever you see here, this is the pupil and that is the iris. This is the iris and that is the pupil as well as here. This is the pupil. This is the iris. Now inside the iris, we have two types of muscles. We have circular muscles. As you can see here, these muscles look round. They are circular muscles. And we have those that look like bicycle, the things in the bicycle. They are called radio muscles. As you can see, they radiate out, kind of radiate out like a sun. So we call them radio muscles. Uh, so inside this, during uh, exposure of the eye to bright light, in order to, because when, when the light is really bright, the pupil has to be decreased or to, it has to become smaller so that the amount of light entering the eye is not so small, is, is not so high. So the circular muscles have to contract and when they contract, the pupil size is going to become so small. As you can see here, so it will constrict. The scientific word you can use here is the pupil constrict. And in here, because all muscles in our bodies, wherever they are, they are antagonistic muscles, meaning when one contracts, the other relaxes. So because, again, in the, in the iris we have the radio as well as the circular muscles, when the radio muscles relax, the circular muscles have to contract so that the size of the pupil can be decreased. In the other side, you can see the radio muscles are contracted. This is when there is a dim light. The radio muscles are going to contract, so the circular muscles have to relax so that the size of the pupil is increased in order to enable the light to go into the eye. So this is what we call the iris reflex, basically how muscles within the iris react to exposure to dim light or exposure to bright light so that the size of the pupil can be changed in order to control how much light enters the eye in order for the light, uh, the cells within our eyes not to be destroyed. So this one is a summary of the how a stimuli or stimuli travel through our, uh, how a stimuli induces an impulse going to the central nervous system and how the iris themselves will, relax, will react to the stimuli. So if there is high light intensity or low light intensity, the light is going to strike the retina and the cells within the retina are going to convert that light into an electric impulse. This impulse will travel through the central nervous system to the central nervous system through the optic nerve. And uh, then we will go, this is going to be taken to the brain, the parts of the brain, of course. This is where we have conscious thought. And then back to the motor neuron and then to the muscle, which is going to be the effector. Now here we have seen we have two muscles. So either it's going to go to the radio muscle or it's going to go to the circular muscle. And then an effect will be carried out, which is going to be change in pupil size. This is the iris reflex, and this is the processes. These are the processes that um, the eye, of course, as well as the brain, go through in order to carry out a response, whereby the size of uh, the size of the pupil is going to be changed in order to contain uh, or to react to the change in the stimuli around the eye.